Williams basketball. It's synonymous with tradition and winning. Five straight trips to the NCAA tournament, back-to-back -back Final Four appearances, and a 1998 senior graduating class that leaves Williams with an incredible 100 wins and just 14 losses. Each one of those young men, Grant Farmer and Brendan McGuire and Mike Nigello, has brought something very unique. But what they brought collectively was a desire to play at the national level and to compete for a national championship. But success at Williams isn't judged by just wins and losses. These student athletes are more concerned with grade point averages than scoring averages. When you talk about the big picture, I mean, obviously academics comes first. And it's an incredible institution. And the people and the relationships that you make, I think, is what, what defines the whole experience. But the final test scores on the court in the 1997-98 season will be the standard by which all Williams teams are judged. Williams alum Harry Sheehy, in his 15th season, guided the Eiffman to a 26-4 record and a third place finish nationally. I think that basketball is really a class. It's basketball 101, and, I, and actually, I would even, it's a not even a 100-level course. It might be a 400-level course, because our goal with our guys is always to make basketball the most, the, the most difficult class they take. If that's the case, this team deserved an A+. The story of the 97-98 Eiffman, the revenge tour that landed them in the Final Four and a place in Williams basketball history. In what may have been the deepest, most competitive NESCAC field in history, Williams had its work cut out just reaching the postseason. With all but one player back from a team that finished third nationally in 1997, every team in the league was gunning for the Eiffman, but they were ready for the challenge. I just think we're relentless. I mean, it's like a never say die attitude. I mean, we're just gonna keep coming at you for 40 minutes. That's what the coaches preach to us, and I think it's, the team believes in it 100 percent. Okay, offensively, take it to them. Its biggest regular season challenge may have come from its biggest rival, Amherst. The Lord Jeffs came to Williams on January 31st undefeated. This showdown with then 11-2 Williams was one of the most important meetings in what might be college sports' hugest small school rivalry. The rivalry is really special. I, I really feel like I've heard some of our coaches say, you know, if we didn't have Amherst, we'd have to invent them. And, and I think that there's a certain amount of truth to that. I just think the two schools, you know, it's, it's, they we're like brothers and we just go after it and the game means a lot. And I think the most important thing is we always tell our guys that for one night, the whole nation looks at that game at our level. And to, to be at a spot where you have that, a game of that importance is really special just to have the game, you know, regardless of the outcome. It means just, uh, playing at your best in a great atmosphere, packed gyms, uh, and even though sometimes the, the teams may not be equal, uh, you can throw the records out. I looked at Buck before the game, Grant Farmer, and uh, you know, I said this is, this is our defining moment, you know, as senior. Senior Michael Nagello from Sudbury, Massachusetts can only be defined as awesome. Against Amherst, he showed why he was a three-time first-team All-American. The NESCAC Player of the Year tore the Lord Jeffs apart with 24 points, 10 rebounds, and 4 assists. Junior Matt Hunt from Clinton, New York, a second team all NESCAC performer, also shined. Hunt scored 27. And with senior tri-captain Brenda McGuire from New York City pouring in 20, Amherst's undefeated run was over, and it wasn't even close. Williams buried the Lord Jeffs. The Eiffman led 56-31 at half and rolled 94-60. to 60. 
the way the Williams Avenue rivalry goes, you know, no matter what the strengths and weaknesses of the teams are, it's always a close game. But to uh, come out and win by, I guess it was 36, that's just sort of, you don't even dream that. Um, it was great. Wins over Amherst are extra special to coach Harry Sheehy. He was a two-time All-American at Williams back in the 70s and chose to return to his alma mater to coach. It's special. I mean, my dad was a captain at Williams in 1951. I was a captain at Williams in 1975. And there's a lot of, of purple blood in the family. Uh, I, I really feel blessed to have the job that I have. And I've said this a number of times. I think I have the best job in America when you combine the quality of student athlete I get to work with, our facilities, uh, the fact that we can be nationally competitive. Uh, I, I just really believe, and I say this to parents all the time, it's the best job in the United States. His strength is that he knows how to motivate you. He's not always going to tell you, he's not, not very frequently going to tell you you're a great player or a good player, but he knows how to get the best out of you. Back to oh, him! Jimmy! Back to oh, him! Jimmy! Now look up! Williams carried the momentum of its big win over Amherst into February. They blew out the other member of the big three, Wesleyan, 87 to 65. Michael Nagello was sensational. He scored 22 points in just 29 minutes. Brendan McGuire netted 17. Junior Mike Holland from Long Island, New York scored 10. And freshman Manny Benjamin from Hillcrest, Zimbabwe slammed the door shut with eight points. Then Williams won a critical game with postseason implications at Connecticut College. The Eves erased an 18-point deficit and won in the closing seconds on a shot by Matt Hunt. I honestly uh, feel that, that uh, we didn't think we were going to lose uh, at one point during the game. And it's just one of those things where we, we've been in this situation before and we just fought back. Williams was now poised to make another postseason run. The Eiffman began March Madness at home against Trinity. Earlier in the season, the Bantams broke Williams' 50-game home winning streak. But on this day, Trinity was thoroughly outplayed. Nigello scored 31 and ripped down 11 boards. Williams moved on to the second round of the NCAA tournament 89 to 63. Success at Williams starts with hard work on and off the court. As soon as you come to the school that you learn, um, you know, how to act off the court and on the court and, and uh, how much hard work plays a role. They constantly amaze me. When you sit around and we're stretching out, I'm asking some of the guys what their thesis topics are. I mean, that's a little scary. <laughs> I still have a fear that I'll end up on the operating table with one of these guys who was pre-med, because <laughs> I know everything that's wrong with them, you know. And, uh, but I think the school, you know, is about excellence. Williams is about excellence. And we would like for our basketball program to reflect the quest for excellence that's, that's prevalent at the rest of the institution.